Well, hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp with Michael Knapp Leather. Well, I got an amazing show, I think, put together for you guys today. Um, and as you read in the intro right there about the masterpieces, and uh, I got to tell you, these are two of the finest items I have ever made. I've been leather crafting since the late 1980s. And um, these pushed my limits. Uh, the, the tolerances, everything had to be so precise. And the gentleman, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm opening two new hides, brand new hides of alligator from my supplier, American Tanning and Leather LLC out of Griffin, Georgia. A darker brown and a lighter, kind of more walnut brown. And this is the watch. Okay, and as you can see, look at these lug pins, you guys. That is a style of strap I usually do not make at all. In fact, I did one back in January on the thumbnail on my YouTube show for that. I said never again. Well, never say never. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. The gentleman ended up calling me. I don't think he ever even had seen one of my shows and I, I believe he found me online and, and gave me a call. I answered the phone, just, you know, I had the time to pick up, and I did. And we got to talking, and the more he was telling me uh, some of the descriptions, I was like, ooh, I don't think that's a style that I make. And, and, you know, I sent him my applicability chart, which shows that, no, that's not a style I make, really. I make more traditional straps where the... The, uh, the upper is actually wrapped around the lug pins, all right, in more of a traditional manner. And that the problem with these is it has those three loops that you have to have a cutout. And uh, with, you know, handcrafting a leather strap, that is a real pain. Uh, and there's, you know, certain things and steps that need to be done for that to be successful and robust enough to last a long time and I'll tell you when he you know was telling me over the phone you know first I'm really I'm turning him down and then he tells me about the watch is a commemorative style watch it's a Swiss watch made for this car that he has and I'm like well what's the car and then he told me it's a GT40 <laughs> and I was like you own a GT40 Here's me driving my buddy's scat pack a couple years ago. He ended up working out west for a whole summer and said, Hey, will you drive my car? So it's a Dodge Challenger scat pack that I got to drive for that summer. I always been a car guy, all right? I used to own some pretty cool sports cars when I was a younger man. I mean, I'm 58 now. I still ride motorcycles. Here's my bike in front of my leather studio. That's a Honda CB1100. Here's my wife's motorcycle. That's a 750 Honda Shadow Phantom. So I've always been like a speed demon. If, uh, you know, those of you that really know me and know me well, I do. I drive very fast. Uh, you know, when I'm heading out to our ranch, which is about an hour and a half drive away, I've done it an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> and they, they usually get mad at me about that. But there's a stretch on... Uh, highway 301 where there's valleys that you go up a hill and you can see for miles after you get over the top and make sure there's no cops in the median and i'll push that car mine pretty hard um i'm not gonna say how fast i actually go but it's in the triple digits let's put it that way so yeah i've always been a car guy and when he told me about you know this is for a 2005 ford gt what you saw in the intro, which was based on really the cars, the Ford GT40, 40, 40 inches high. That's why the 40 is in there. Back going to 1965-66 at uh, Le Mans and, you know, a lot of, a lot of races, the, the, the Daytona, the Sebring, all the big races of the day. Ford wanted to buy Ferrari and uh, they, they had a deal. Iacocca went over there and 
was putting together this deal, and and it looked like it was going to go through. And at the last minute, Enzo Ferrari backed out. So Henry Ford II, they called him the Deuce. If you've seen the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, I would highly recommend seeing that movie. That's what this is really all about. Okay, it's a great movie, um, and it, it talks about Carroll Shelby in the movie and Ken Miles, the the driver who unfortunately was killed in one of these cars, kind of on a fluke accident, just a practice run. And, uh, you know, so I I knew all of the history of this car. It's kind of a dream car. I remember seeing the Jay Leno, Jay Leno's Garage episode that he did on the 2005 uh, Ford GT. I believe he does have one. There was a newer one that actually had come out. I can't remember which year, 2015, something like that. But, um, you know, this was a car that was based on the Ford GT40 that came out in 2005. It is 44 inches high. They didn't know what to name it. The the name GT40 had been relinquished, and uh, somebody else had the rights to it. So they couldn't, they couldn't call it GT40 anymore. And uh, so, you know, they, they just decided on the Ford GT... And they, they only made a limited amount because from 2004 through 2006, really, the regulations were that uh, the, the height of the bumper, the height of the header, which is where the top of the windshield are, would allow the this style to be mass-produced. Well, in 2007... They changed it where the height of the header had to go up a certain amount of inches and would have just ruined the profile of the car. And they just said, that's it. All right, we're, we're done making them. So that's kind of the backstory on the car. Now, I don't know actually a lot about this watch. I was online looking. Um, and so you could kind of do your own due diligence if you were interested. But from what Rob told me, the owner of this watch, and thanks, Rob, for everything brother I, you sent me some shots today that's why i'm finally able to get this all edited put together and uploaded onto youtube uh, i kind of been waiting for some shots on him but uh and this I'll, I'll tell you here in a little bit uh was the big factor in hot and the success of this trip what you're seeing me do right here is uh, stitching those loops into a spacer but, uh, Rob, yeah, thanks again, buddy. And uh, just an incredible watch. I, I, there was a very limited amount of them made as well. But, you know, when he was on the phone with me, it was like, and explaining everything. It's like, okay, okay, I'm going to charge you extra on a customization fee. He's like, I don't care. But the backstory about this stitching, I'll tell you, I was out at our ranch sitting on the tractor the day before I was getting home to start these straps because he did a rush order on them. And I made these over Memorial Weekend. I thought it was going to take me an entire week. But, uh, you know, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do this and, and do it successfully. And these are just rough cuts still right here. Okay, this isn't the final sizing cuts. But as I was on the tractor, it's like, okay, I could make a spacer and stitch the uh, loops into the spacer before... Um, you know, I do anything, and then I can attach and glue in the lining side and then stitch that in, and it'll cover everything up. So that was the idea I had. If you watch the episode from January where I say never again on that uh, Ulysses Narden uh, watch and strap that I made, it was a black alligator with red lining, really cool red shinky Ikaku shell cordovan lining. And I think it turned out sweet. Um, the guy really likes the strap, but it was like, man, it was so hard. And instead of doing what I did here, I just attached another little piece of alligator to cover it and then stitched it all together. And to me, I just wasn't satisfied with that. So that's how I came up with this. I knew I had to come up with this another, another way. And that's what I came up with. So you can see here what I'm doing is uh, gluing in the uh, the lining side and then covering all of that 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 spacer right there so 
I just thank God. I'll tell you, I mean, I, I even, I told Rob after I got done with these, um, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I started them on that Friday of Memorial Weekend. I worked from 7 a.m. to midnight, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, got done Monday, Memorial Day here in the United States. Memorial Day is Monday, May 23rd, just a couple weeks ago. Um, I had tears in my eyes. I it was like just out of relief that not only did uh, I do it, and they, but how well they turned out. But it was just relief in getting them done because anytime I have, honestly, you know, a rush order or something that's going to take a, a more time, and I have over forty orders going, you know, right now that have, people have already paid for, waiting on their straps. I'm at about a two month turnaround time, six eight week turnaround time is what I stayed on my website. But the reality is more. It's like eight weeks. I knew, oh my gosh, this is going to really put me behind even more. And that's why I burned the midnight oil and worked all through Memorial Weekend to get these done. So I told him, I said, I got done with these, man. I cried. I was, I looked at them and I was just like, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to the honor and, and of having the talent and, and the experience and know-how of making these, but also, you know, that how how well they turned out and that I was I you know I was done I got them done and we next day aired them out uh, on Tuesday the next day after Memorial Day he got them on Wednesday and sent me a wonderful text how pleased he was he, he said it just was way beyond his expectations he said he was he showed his wife the straps like 10 times just look at these just look at these and I was so pleased about it. And I told them the truth. I said, you know, I, when I got done with these, I cried. I mean, I honest, these are my masterpieces. That's why I put that in the intro. Um, and it's the truth. It really is the truth. I've made about a half a dozen straps since then. And it's almost, I'll just say it, it's almost anticlimactic. It's not that I want to end up doing more of these. Please don't contact me with this style. <laughs> not for a while. And it's got to be something really exceptionally cool, like having it based on some fancy car that I love. But uh, I, I will probably turn you down. But yeah, I mean, I've made about a half a dozen traditional straps, and it's like they're so easy, you know, now. Um, and and for me, I mean, I could make these in my sleep. I've literally made thousands of watch straps. So, you know, they're really very simple for me to make. Um, it just, it's the time. It's a time-consuming thing. And each one has their own unique personality and, you know, uh, and everything to them. But you can see all the steps that I'm doing, uh, things I don't normally showcase that on my shows to show you a lot of these different steps. You know, this is something I've never showcased before is using my Regad machine of how, you know, I, I push through where the, the lug holes are and get those nice and perfect and sweet. And you can see the uh, the secondary keeper on that clamp, you know, so it's first glued and then allowed to dry, and I clamp it before I actually stitch it together. You're going to see me do that. I don't think I've ever showcased that on my show before either. So here, here it is right here. I, I prick in three holes right there right, right where it gets attached I use an auger kind of to help spread it open so I can get my needle through there and thread because sometimes it's very difficult to do that but you can see I'm also kind of pushing it uh, to to allow that needle to get through first and then you go in from the back side and I uh, do a double stitch and then uh, snip it off and kind of burn in the frayed ends and welds it all in together and then tamp it down before I put it on. But yeah, a lot of steps I don't normally show. So, and that's my uh, Coca-Cola burnisher, that wood burnisher right there. That's what I use on the edges. So, and you can see that uh, beeswax, that little block next to the hammer, just above the hammer. That's what I put on the, uh, the edges after they're the final edge coat, you know, I put three layers of edge coat on this these straps. 
And that's the other thing I think Rob didn't understand is he ordered two of the exact same straps. So, I mean, that that's why I cried, you guys, because, you know, not only are you having to make one perfect strap, uh, let alone two, so it's exponentially harder because all of the dimensions, everything's got to be exactly the same. So, and here's some products. I don't hardly ever showcase these as well. This is a Venetian cream that I use on Shell Cordovan. Those are Shell Cordovan leather linings that I upgraded them to. And uh, there's also a sapphire um, polish that I use on the top of the alligator to really get them kind of real cleaned up right here and uh, nice and shiny so you can see me applying that so any of you that have some of my straps or any leather straps these are two fantastic products to have the venetian for shell cordovan the sapphire for the uppers of alligator and all leather all leather you, and even with shoes this is great and they come in colors this isn't just a neutral that i always use um, on my straps so there you go, right there. And here we're gonna see final product, you guys. Look at these. So the A strap, I lettered them, A and B. They're interchangeable, completely interchangeable. There's the watch and the dial. Look at that tachymeter. This is the B strap, but yeah, right there, the three loops, and you can see where it's attached to the lug pins. That was the pain. That was, how am I going to do this, man? And we did it. We did it. So I just, again, I thank God for the ability, uh, really. I mean, this is my passion. I love, love making watch straps. You guys know that I'm super busy as an audio prostologist owning and operating my own hearing health care clinic. And, you know, the ranch, 130-acre cattle ranch with um, some of my uh, my best and, and most loyal friends, I got to tell you, you know, we're, we're so busy with that, constantly doing fence work and putting in new gates and, you know, just all the general maintenance on top, moving cows. So, and there you can see there's the B stamped into the buckle end. And... 52923B that it was Memorial Day. So just I'm like the busiest guy on the planet, let alone you know making straps and then doing these shows. Here's what Rob sent me this morning. So there's the watch with the A strap on it on the hood of his GT. Oh my gosh, how cool. And here's more of a close-up look. Thanks for sending these, Rob. I really appreciate that, brother. Very cool. He absolutely loves these, man. I'm so glad you're happy with them. Another look at how I got them boxed up. So there's the B strap in the box and the A strap on the watch. There's the write up that you get that has all the care and maintenance included. A couple of uh, my cards. That's the back end of the card. This is a really cool shot. He sent a bit on his shifter in his 2005 Ford GT. Thanks, Rob. Look at that. How cool. And one last look. Well, thanks, you guys, for joining me. Thanks again, Rob. My masterpieces. And I hope you all enjoyed this show. Until next time, what do we say? Keep on ticking.